Well, hello everyone. This is a video about using 3D slicing software, in case you're curious what it's like to actually prepare a file for 3D printing, just to give you a feel of what it's like. This is Ultimaker Cura, which is one of the more popular tools out there, just the one that I happen to use. And when you pull it up, you'll see a bunch of these different uh, sections to it. Uh, over here in the middle, we have a view of our 3D model where Nothing's loaded yet, so it's currently empty, but this is basically the bottom plate of our 3D printer right here, the grid. Our objects will show up there, and then it's giving us an idea of the overall size of that, and each of these blocks is um, a certain uh, scale to give you an idea of the size of the image. We'll also see it down here. Over on the right are our different options for printing, and we'll look at those once we actually load in a file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go in and load a little uh, mini, a little Dungeons and Dragons style mini. This is actually a large one, this would be larger than a normal uh, creature, and I can just you know, rotate that and get a sense of what it looks like. I can even pull the whole thing up and then zoom in so I get a sense of that mini. So okay, it's loaded in, that's all well and good. So now let's look at what my options are, and there are a few over here that I tend to change a lot. Um, the first one is the layer height. That's basically the resolution at which we're going to print the object. 0.1 millimeters is usually the finest resolution you can get for a desktop 3D printer. So that's probably about as low as you're going to get. If we went up to, say, 0.3, it would be a much lower resolution print, but it would print much faster. So let's start with 0.1. And then we come back down here to infill density. This is basically saying the inside of the object, so inside the chest, for example, we could make that hollow, um, or we can make it completely full of plastic, or we could fill it in with something uh, in between those two things, an intermediary. And this basically says, how thick is that infill? Is it 50%, 20%, etc.? I normally stick with a default of 20%. That's usually enough to give the object some rigidity. Obviously, if it's empty, then it's going to be more fragile. So you, I like usually having something in there. And 20% is usually enough to just keep it together, um, anything more and it just gets heavier and heavier with really no benefit. Now, sometimes you want a heavier object, but in this case I don't. And you can choose the infill pattern and lots of different ways of doing that, which may have some uh, slight uh, effect on the actual object and how it, uh, how it fills and so forth, but the default's usually fine. Then there's printing temperature. This is the temperature at which the plastic will be melted uh, at when it's actually printing the thing. And uh, this is something you normally have to fiddle around a little bit when you're first starting out to find out the ideal temperature for your printer and filament. So different plastics will print at slightly different um, uh, temperatures, also depending on manufacturer. So the same plastic from a different manufacturer might require um, a slightly higher or lower temperature. Uh, there's also build plate temperature. So this is basically the temperature of the build plate. Some 3D printers, a lot of them now, will allow you to heat the build plate which improves adhesion of that first layer onto the build plate. If the build plate is cold, it's more likely that the plastic will pop off. So if you can, you want a temperature there. Then you're down to things like print speed. Um, if you have a very delicate model, you might want to print that more slowly, for example, so that the printer's not uh, zipping all around while trying to print it. Uh, I, I rarely have to change this. And the other big one is support. As you can see with this model, there's an arm sticking right out here in the middle of nowhere. If we tried to print this as is, then the printer would try to print this bottom of the arm, and the plastic would just goop down into thin air. We'd never actually be able to print that arm. Indeed, you might be able to see there are some little red bits on this model. That's telling us where there's what's called overhang. This is where we kind of need supports. In fact, if I rotate this around, you see how we're seeing these red sections, that is where there is overhang, where basically if you tried to print there, the plastic would have nothing to hold on to. So by selecting supports, then when it prints, it's actually going to print rods that go up underneath these areas to support it. I'll have to remove those later, but at least we'll get something. So let's go ahead, and th th these are the main things that I have to uh, uh, change whenever I'm looking at something, layer height and such. Uh, let's go ahead and click prepare, and that's going to basically um, set up everything we need to export to the 3D printer for printing. So this is a 3D model. We need to actually create the sliced version for printing. And it says, okay, we're done, ready to save to file. 
And so I can just click this and it would let me save to a file. It tells us it's going to take about an hour and 10 minutes to print and it will use up about four grams of filament. And because I've, I've entered in um, the cost of my roll of filament, it's estimating that's about 10 cents worth of filament, US dollars. Also tells us over here the size of the, uh, the object. And this is important because you know it's good to know if you have a roll of filament, you're getting close to the end, how much more filament you need to finish up this piece. And how heavy it's gonna be, about four grams. So we have this thing prepped, but what does the preparation actually do? We can actually see that in Cura. So I'm gonna switch from solid view to layer view. And this is gonna show us all the different layers that it's going to print out. So let's go zip down to layer one. And what this is telling us is that uh, when the 3D printer starts to print, it's going to lay out plastic in this exact shape at that uh, first height. And it's gonna go up by one layer. Let's see if I can get this to go up exactly one. It's really hard. No, it doesn't want to because there's not a lot of space. Can I? Yeah. There's no real, is there a way for me to, I don't think so. So, but you see how I go to layer three, it's printing essentially the same shape. But if I go up a little bit further, there we go. Now we're starting to get both some of the base of the object, there's his feet, along with some of those support materials that will be used to actually support the legs and the rest of the, uh, the figure. In fact, this stuff out here is support material for the arm. And we can see that as we continue to go up and it's building up those support materials. These are all those layers, layers it's printing. See, there's that arm right there getting supported by that support material. There's some support material probably for the head, I would assume. Let's continue going up. Isn't this cool? And there we go. And there's the, the very top. So now we can see and see the support needed for the ears. So these are, this, is, this shows you exactly what it's doing for that object. Pretty, pretty handy. Give you an idea of how it's actually gonna print and where this will all go. Now you'll notice in some places, like right here, there's actually, like the support is going on, but there's nothing connecting those two. That is because the software knows that when this prints, there will actually be a little bit of overlap between these two. The plastic isn't gonna exactly conform to this shape. So this will actually support this part of the arm. It's just not, it just doesn't really look like it right here. Um, it's just one of those interesting things that the software knows and can figure, can figure out. Now that's for a 0.1 millimeter resolution. Let's change this to 0.3 millimeters and re-prepare. That's going to uh, regenerate the motion that's gonna be used for this. And you can see here already, there are many fewer layers, only 159, and each layer is printing a much larger chunk of the creature, but we're getting less detail. Look at that hand. That hand is very, very coarse, and we're gonna really see those lines when we print out this object. So this is definitely not ideal. You see we're getting very little detail in the face as well. So low resolution is definitely not ideal for something like this, but if you're printing out a crate, for example, um, you know, uh, there may be no detail on that to actually uh, show up. So a lower resolution, maybe 0.2, um, should be fine. Let's go all the way up to 0.1 again, re-prepare. It'll take longer this time because it's making more slices, although it shouldn't take that long. There we go. And now we see all of those very, very fine, fine layers. We're getting a lot more detail there. Look, look at that. Look at that hand. You can see just all the detail of that glove. That's really cool. So basically, once you've imported your file and then prepared it, you just save that to a file and basically copy that file to like an SD card, copy that to your 3D printer and uh, command your 3D printer to print that file using its own interface. So those are the basics of Cura. Uh, obviously, there are lots of other things to do here. This is just to give you a basic idea of how it works. Uh, it's certainly not a, uh, a manual here, but just for those curious, so you have the, the basics of this. I hope this has been useful, and uh, uh, I hope you find some fun things to 3D print. Thanks for watching.